Hi everyone. On January 31st, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of a truly remarkable saint whose experiences perhaps have some very important lessons for us today. I'm speaking of Saint Nikita of the Kiev Caves, who became a recluse towards the middle and end of his life. Now, obedience, of course, in the Orthodox Church is of paramount importance, especially if you are in a monastery. In a parish, though, it can also still be of very, very great value, not for the sake of giving up responsibility for oneself or for letting someone else lord it over us, but instead as a way of self-denial, as a way of giving up our will and desires in certain ways in order to become more Christ-like while letting His will descend upon us. When Nikita was someone who was very, very much enthusiastic about everything, and as a young monk, he decided and went to his abbot, the holy Nikon, to ask him if he could live as a recluse, someone who would live far away from the monastery and perhaps come to the monastery for special services, things like this. It is, according to the fathers, a very dangerous path, and few there be that can successfully navigate it. Well, our holy abbot knew this, and so he told Nikita, my son, this is really not for you now. This is something that you, that you are not to do because you're very young, and there's always the danger of deception. Remember our brother Izaki, who was tempted terribly by demons and barely escaped. Well, Nikita did not want to hear this, and he said, but Father, I understand this, and I feel confident that I can defend myself against demonic attacks, and that if I do this and progress in this, that the Lord will grant me to be a wonder worker, just as Izaki became. Well, our holy abbot again was a little bit undecided about this and said, no, this is not for you to do. Your obedience is to stay here among the brethren and to serve them. Well, after hearing these very wise and spirit-inspired words, Nikita decided to do just the opposite. And so he went out and became a recluse and locked himself in his cell and began praying day and night. And after a while, he noticed that he was hearing a voice that sounded like someone was praying with him. And then he smelled a wonderful fragrance like he had never smelled before. And he thought to himself, my goodness, this could not be demonic. This must be an angel praying with me because I've never smelled anything like this. And so he continued on on this path of following his own will. Well, after a while, he beseeched the Lord. He said, Lord, appear to me so that I can see you for myself. And he heard a voice back that said, no, I'm sorry. You have fallen. You cannot see me in this life. However, I will send my angel to comfort you and to be with you. And at that point, a demon clothed in a robe of light, looking like an angel, did appear to Nikita. And he told him, look, you really don't need to pray so much. Instead, spend your time doing spiritual reading in that way. That way, Later on, people will be able to come to you and you can give them very good and godly guidance. And so Nikita did this, and all the while, the demon, dressed as an angel, who was there, acted as if he was praying. And so Nikita thought, well, I don't need to pray because he's there praying for me, and that's the important thing. Well, this was an obvious deception that was going to lead to his ruin. And it didn't help the fact that Nikita indeed was able to get some what he thought were visions that he was going to tell people and help people about. He told, in fact, at one point that a certain prince had died and that the prince in his realm should call for someone else to take his place. And indeed, that prince, who was named Gleb, did indeed repose. And all the people around that area knew about this, and so they rushed to see Nikita. 
and he would talk to them and give them guidance. And even some of the guidance he gave was very, very good indeed. But yet, the abbot knew that this was troublesome. And so he got many of the brothers and several of the bishops in uh, local areas to come and pray and pray hard that Nikita might be delivered from this demonic influence. And in fact, one day it did happen. And Nikita all of a sudden lost the ability to read or write. He became totally illiterate. And when he had finally come to himself and the demon was finally purged from his sight, he realized the mistake that he had made and began repenting heavily. As time went on, Nikita indeed did accomplish godly things, and he did indeed become a wonder worker, but only after he was brought to repentance and spent much, much time in that state begging God's forgiveness and asking forgiveness of his spiritual father, the abbot, and of all the brethren. Over time, because of this repentance, and because of his ascetical activities, he was able to attain a great degree of holiness and, in fact, did become a wonder worker. In fact, not only a wonder worker, but he was consecrated as Bishop of Novgorod. So his beginning was very dicey, but his end was quite wonderful. But it should show all of us the dangers of following our will, especially in the face of guidance we may be getting from our spiritual fathers or friends or people in the church, things like this, because self-will inevitably leads to absolute destruction. But the good thing about it is that if we do repent, there is always the hope and help for correction. St. Nikita, like his brother in the monastery in the Kiev Caves, Izaki, learned that self-will was not the road and that even enthusiasm for the things of God must be tempered by those that are more wise in the things of God. Nikita does serve indeed as an example for us today to stay away from anyone who might be leading us down a false path. And even in the church, there are people that are like that that can be dangerous when we listen to them. We must instead heed the instructions of our pastors, of our bishops, and actually of our common sense, which will always lead us if we follow our conscience into the things of God. There can be no other way but submitting our will to Him and to no other, we can also attain to the heights that St. Nikita did in his lifetime. Bye-bye.